Hey everyone, so this is going to be the start of the next topic, which is all about projectile motion. Now I mentioned in class that this is a continuation of what we talked about with linear motion, but we're now going to talk about it with two dimensions rather than just one. So uh, now instead of an object just moving left or right or up or down, it's going to move, be moving in multiple directions at the same time. Um, so before we actually start, our discussion of this, uh, we're going to have to talk a little bit more about some of the vector stuff that I kind of skipped over. Um, some recaps, so these were things that we had mentioned before about how vectors have both magnitude and direction, things like displacement, velocity, and acceleration are vectors. Anything that is somewhat complex or anything that you can tag to the right to is a vector. Um, we can find the resultant or the combination of multiple vectors by either graphing it and or I shouldn't say graphing it but drawing a diagram of it uh, making sure that it's to scale using a ruler or protractor drawing it to tip to tail and making sure that the resultant goes from start to finish remember this idea of uh, making a diagram is essentially doing a um, like a treasure map going to the location and then uh, we also did talk about how to find it mathematically by assigning uh, sign conventions based off of what direction it's going and using calculator and trig stuff. Um, just again some recap things like making sure that your arrow represents uh, the length of it is drawn to scale and it represents the magnitude, making sure that you have the arrowhead to show the direction. Again uh, the order doesn't matter, you can draw them whatever order you want as long as you're making sure to maintain the length and direction of each vector and making sure that it's still tip to tail at each time you'll still get to the same location. Um, I said uh, this was the recap for the uh, you know when we're doing the mathematical process where we basically separate all the uh, like directions up down left right north south east west and we make all those directions either positive or negative uh, convention is that anything that's going up, right, north, east, forward are usually defined as positive, and then the opposite directions are negatives. Yeah, so you replace the direction with one of the signs, and then you add them normally. Uh, the one thing to note, though, is that you can only add up and down together, or left and right together, or north and south. Um, if you end up having something that goes north and then west, those are perpendicular directions, you'd have to do something extra. Um, now, uh, the whole thing that I recommended, again, when I um, did this in class, is that you pretty much want to create a right triangle. So you do a quick little sketch of the path that you're doing. So in this example, we go two south, so we draw a line that goes south, three meters east, six meters north, and if we're asking our displacement, besides just graphing it out, what we would do is just figure out, well, how far essentially did we go uh, east and north? because we did end up going northeast. So if we look at this diagram, we went three meters east, and then uh, we went two south and six north, so we actually went four north. So we can redraw the diagram to look like this, three meters east and four meters north, and make this into a right triangle, and from there you can easily see what we have to do, Pythagorean theorem. Um, this is pretty much everything that I had mentioned before, that um, when you're doing the graphing method in two dimensions, nothing changes. Uh, you still measure it out, and it actually makes a lot of the math easier. Uh, but with when you do it mathematically, you have to make sure that you don't just add all the vectors together, that you pretty much create the right triangle and do Pythagorean theorem with it. Um, I'm just pretty much skipping a lot of this, because it's a lot of the same stuff that we mentioned like I said we did in class you have a right triangle one side is eight meters long another side is six meters long you can find the resultant by doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared to get that it's going to be 10 meters long um, I'm saying meters but remember uh, this can be done with any vector so this could be done with velocity uh, this could be done with accelerations forces, anything like that. In fact, you will start to see it with all the other types of vectors, not just a displacement. Uh, we can also find the angle mathematically. Uh, I usually recommend, again, that you use a protractor, 
just because it's so much easier and quicker. Uh, but what you would do is use Sokotoa. So using the whole sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, or tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Normally, I like to use the tangent one for this. Uh, and you can use this to figure out the angle. We'll do a little bit more examples with uh, the com oh, with doing Sokotoa in a bit. So if if this is kind of uh, losing you a bit or you kind of forgot this stuff, don't worry. We'll do it in a second. Yeah. So in the end, we would pretty much say that this is our final position, 10 meters at 36.9 degrees northeast. Um, yeah, so like I said, a lot of times, most of the questions you do, uh, the, you can create a right triangle from that. And if you do, it's going to be very straightforward of Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant or Sokotoa to find the angle. Uh, and like I said, the, the main thing is that you want to redraw the lines tip to tail. All right, so we'll do a quick question here. So pause video work and self, we'll go over it in a second. So a common thing that people will do is they'll just draw a line going from this arrow to this arrow and call it uh, done. It, it, you would still get the, the correct magnitude, but your direction would be off. What you want to do is redraw this so it's tip to tail. We start at this location. We go 1.5 meters per second to the right. And then I want to redraw this arrow right over here. Now. Normally, I'd want to make sure I keep it the same length, but in this case, it doesn't really matter too much. And then from here, my resulting goes from start to finish. Even though these are velocities, we can treat it just like we did with the displacement vectors. So to figure out the um, magnitude, we would just do Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 1.5 squared plus 0.7 squared equals c squared. And then from there, uh, making sure to take the square root of this after we add it, we will end up getting 1.66 meters per second. So this is my resultant velocity. Uh, and then the direction, uh, we could add in the angle. Uh, a lot of times uh, they're fine with just saying northeast. Uh, but if you want to find the angle, you could do, like I said, Sokotoa. In this case, I want to actually do tangent. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Tan theta equals opposite is the 0.7 over 1.5. So tan theta is going to be equal to 0 0.467. Uh, I need to get the theta by itself. So we don't divide by tan theta. Instead, what we're going to do is inverse tan, or when you put it in the calculator, second tan. And you would end up getting uh, 25 degrees. So if you wanted to add in an angle as well, you could have done that. Here's the next question. Pause the video, work on stuff, and we'll go over in a second. All right, once again, they tell me that we go east, then we go south, and they want to find a resultant. So that means I'm doing the whole Sokotoa and Pythagorean theorem. Uh, they, I don't need to do Sokotoa since they just say magnitude. So I go east and south. This is 12, this is 5. My resultant the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 12 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. Doing the, the math, we'd end up getting 13 meters per second. And that's it. Draw a diagram, 
simplify it to a right triangle, and then so could, and then uh, do Pythagorean theorem. Here's the next question. Pause the video work itself, and we'll go over it in a second. All right. So we go one meters east, one meter south, and then two meters west. So if I draw it out, it would look like this. One, one, two. My resultant goes along here. In the end, I basically only went one west and one south. So I'm going to redraw this like this. And then once again, Pythagorean theorem. One squared plus one squared equals c squared. Make sure to actually use a calculator because this is not equal to 1. This is going to be equal to 1.4 kilometers. All right. And uh, that's it for that quick little recap. Now, there is something else that I need to talk about in this next part. And this is uh, the concept of components. So this actually ends up being a much bigger thing. Uh, and it's something that you're definitely going to have to do a lot. And it's basically the complete opposite of what we just did. See, before, we had two parts of the right triangle, and we tried to find the hypotenuse. Now we're going to work backwards. We're going to be given that hypotenuse to find the two right sides of the triangle. Uh, this is actually very important, because in this topic, what we're going to find out is that when an object moves horizontally and is affected by something that's forcing it to move horizontally, that does not affect its motion vertically. So uh, what we're going to have to do is take a lot of these vectors that act at different angles and break it up into x and y sides. So for example, let's say we had a um, vector and it was at some angle like 40 degrees. I'd want to know how much of it is pointed horizontally and how much of it is pointed vertically. And that's pretty much it. Essentially, what I'm doing is if I had a gra if I had this graph, just like I did on here, I'd want to know what is the x coordinate and what the y coordinate is. That's pretty much what we're doing. All right. Uh, a lot of times, the x component is going to be called the horizontal component, or sometimes rarely called the component parallel to the ground, because the ground's horizontal, so horizontal parallel, yada yada yada. A uh, y component, likewise, would be sometimes called the vertical component or com perpendicular to the ground. Uh, basically, you know you're going to be using Sokotoa, uh, and you're, you'll be doing this type of stuff. The moment you see the word component, it's going to tell you sides of the right triangle. In fact, I would recommend that every time you see the word component, write side of triangle because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the y side of the triangle. You're looking for the x side of the triangle. And that might help uh, remind you what you have to do. And like I said, you're gonna be using Sokotoa. So try it out here. Pause video work itself, and we'll go over it in a second. All right, so here they're looking for uh, the, force, uh, the, the side of the triangle that acts perpendicular to the ground. So here's the ground. Here is my triangle. The side that's perpendicular is this side, the y side. So when I use Sokotoa, my angle is right here. This side is opposite the angle, and this side is the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse goes with sine. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, sine of 60 degrees equals y over 300. Make sure you're in degree mode, cross multiply, and you end up getting uh, 300 times sine of 60, which is going to be 260 newtons. And that's it. Again, you're finding Sokotoa, uh, you're making a right triangle, and you have to pick the right one based off of what's given to you and where the angle is, and plug it in like that. Again, make sure that your uh, angle is in degrees. And also, 
when it comes to showing work, this is required. You have to make sure that you include this as your equation and this as the unit. Two things that people will often forget and lose points on. All right, here's the next question. Pause the video work in itself. We'll go over in a second. So uh, they said that we have a vector that makes an angle, and they're asking about the horizontal and vertical sides. So we have a triangle. We want this side and this side to be the same, equal in magnitude. Uh, the only angle that this works with is a 45 degree angle. You should remember this from right triangles, that a 45 degree, 45, 90 right triangle has two equal sides. You can test this out by just doing sine of 45 and then doing cosine 45 and seeing which one gives you um, and seeing that they give you the same number. So it's just something to look out for that anytime you have something at 45 degrees, you know that those two sides are the same. All right, here's the next question. Pause the video, work on itself, and we'll go over in a second. So again, uh, we're talking about the, once you see the components, these are sides of triangles. So we just want to see which one will allow us to make a right triangle with the hypotenuse being five. Uh, we can go through all these and check them out. See if this works. See if this works. This. And this. Uh, when you do all that and test it out, you'll realize that this is the only one that works. It's a 3-4-5 triangle. Uh, another way that you can kind of quickly uh, get rid of choices is that um, when you do this, the two sides have to add up to something bigger than the hypotenuse. 1 plus 4 equals 5, so there's no way that the hypotenuse can be that. And 2 and 3, again, add up to 5, so that, that wouldn't make sense. And this would actually be an equilateral triangle. All right, here's the next question. Pause the video, work on itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right, so once again, we have 15 here. The angle is 60 degrees. And they want to know the components or the sides of the triangle. So starting, uh, we'll start with the Y one, Sokotoa. y is opposite and 15 is the hypotenuse so sine equals opposite over hypotenuse sine of 60 equals y over 15 and then y equals 15 times sine of 60 which is 13 meters per second you want to make sure that you're putting units where they belong. Uh, for the x component, now now that we have this side, we actually could use Pythagorean theorem, but I just want to make sure that we have some practice using Sokotoa. So what we're going to do is, um, this is the adjacent side, that's the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine 60 degrees equals x over 15. So x should be equal to 7.5 meters per second. And these are your components. I highly recommend that you remember some of the easy conversions like cosine 60 being equal to 0.5 and sine 30 being equal to 0.5. Here's the next question. Pause the video work itself and we'll go over in a second. All right, so once again, uh, they're looking for the vertical side of the initial velocity. The fact that they don't call this 10 meters per second uh, at, like a component or anything, uh, where we know that this is 10 meters per second, and the angle here is 60. A uh, common mistake is people see the word horizontal and then they see the number, but this term is actually being related to the 60 degrees saying that it's this specific angle. Uh, so from here, again, Sokotoa, opposite over hypotenuse, we're using sine. Um, 
probably should have wrote it out um, 60 degrees plug in all this in we get 8.7 again get into the habit of writing the equation and showing all your work that way when it comes time to it you won't forget um, now if you keep forgetting about the Sokotoa um, you don't have to worry too much the reference table actually has Sokotoa in it uh, for those who are in class um, I gave you um, the the first and last page Sokotoa is actually on the inner pages so you wouldn't see it there but you can always download the full reference table uh, but besides that there actually are two equations on the back that are variations on this components so you'll see these two equations ay equals a sine theta and ax equals a cosine theta basically this is used when you're finding a vertical component and this is used when you're finding a horizontal component so that's what ay is representing that's the vertical component ax is your horizontal and a is whatever the hypotenuse is um, one thing to note this only works if your angle is on this side of the triangle you know next to the horizontal side if it's up here it's not gonna work yeah so this is what I said before it only works when this angle is to the horizontal uh, and that's about it there's other things that I need to talk about with the vectors but I'll save them to it for another video if you have any other questions please let me know if you had any mistakes or you wanted me to clarify anything uh, either contact me through Remind, join the extra help, or ask me in class. Otherwise, see you later and good luck.